on today's Apple Daily. PSA, be careful what you pick up this Black Friday. Redesigned MacBooks due to launch in the second half of 2021 with Apple Silicon. And what would M1X performance numbers look like? Plus, Notification Squad. For the latest Apple news, rumors, and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. Thanks, Siri. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of that stuff that Siri just mentioned, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you can join our notification squad because you are not quite too late to join our giveaway for ESR goodies. Entries will close on Friday, but you need to be a member of the notification squad if you want to win. And right now, 85% of the people watching this video are not subscribed to the channel, which makes me sad inside. So please ring that bell. Cool, so first up, PSA for Black Friday. Please be careful what you buy on Black Friday. Although the deals look pretty good, there are some things out there that you might want to avoid. So it is Thanksgiving week, which uh, outside of America means pretty much nothing. But in America, happy Thanksgiving, guys. The good thing for us outside America is we've now inherited Black Friday, which means that we will be getting loads of discounts on all sorts of good stuff on the internet. But this is my quick PSA to say, just be careful what you buy, because especially with Apple products, a lot of the stuff you might find discounts on right now is because they're about to be updated. So right now you can get the lowest prices ever on iPad Pros. However, remember they are powered by A12Z, which is two year old technology. Um, we are expecting an A14X version to come out fairly soon, possibly around March. So if you pick them up, be aware that there is gonna be a much more powerful version coming fairly soon and we expect the A14X is going to perform pretty much in line with the M1 chips in the current MacBook lineup. Because the power of the cores is pretty much going to be the same. There will be some different fluff around the outside in terms of the extra stuff that's added on. But we'll be talking about performance pretty soon. That being said, there will also be some really good deals probably on AirPods. Again, probably going to be upgraded fairly soon, but they're still going to sound awesome. They're still going to be as good as they are right now. It's not a performance hit that you're going to take there. Um, there will also be cases for your new iPhones. There will be loads of great deals, I would expect, on Intel-based uh, Macs. So if you are not quite ready to jump into the warm, warm water of the Apple Silicon pool just yet, um, and you need uh, that Windows support with Bootcamp, then this would be a really great time to buy something. Uh, and also probably the original HomePods, which have picked up uh, Dolby Atmos support with Apple TV 4K. You can put a, a couple of them in front of your uh, screen now and get some incredible sound. If you haven't checked it out yet, uh, look for Airphone Elijah's video. Um, he's one of the guys from the Cultcast, and he's done a great video on HomePods with Atmos support. Also, if you are planning to buy anything this Black Friday, please check out the links down in the description. They are Amazon affiliates links, um, so I do get a little bit of a kickback from them. It helps to support the channel. There's also all of our social media and Discord links down there, so you can do all that stuff at the same time. Redesign MacBooks expected to launch in the second half of 2021 with Apple Silicon. I mean, I wasn't expecting anything to launch without Apple Silicon right now. This comes from Ming-Chi Kuo and is in line with what we were expecting for Apple Silicon coming along with the M2 processors, which is what we expect will succeed them next year on the next refresh. So he mentions the 14 and 16 inch designs for the MacBook Pro. Again, I'm not 100% convinced that they're gonna to go to a 14 inch MacBook Pro. I think they might just shrink the chassis now that we don't need the extra thermal envelope uh, for the new chips that we have, but we will see. But that is when we are expecting to see the redesigns for these smaller MacBooks at least. What would M1X performance look like numbers wise? So uh, the other day Gadgetcast uh, which had a great lineup, he had Travis, uh, Greg's Gadgets, Everyday Dad, Luke Miani and Renny Ritchie all on one podcast live stream which I was absolutely hooked on. Luke Miani was asked what he would expect uh, the numbers to look like for the M1X or, you know, the larger version, the desktop version of the M1. And I've seen these rumours in a few places online that it will be a 12 core chip with four ice storm or high efficiency cores and eight firestorm high performance cores. So I've done some numbers. Um, now, <laughs> do not take my numbers as gospel, but this is how I've worked it out uh, based on kind of Geekbench scores, which is what we've been working with quite a bit. I'm not a systems architect, nor do I know if that's actually a thing or if that person, if they exist, would know what to do with these numbers either. But this is what I've done. So based on the Mac Mini, because that's the one with the most active cooling right now, um, the Mac Mini gets 1703 single core and 7381 on its multi-core score. So 1703 times four Firestorm cores gives you 6812. So that means that the efficiency cores are basically giving us 
569 points of performance when we've got those benchmarks running. Now, I think those efficiency cores can contribute more, but I think they ramp down a little bit as the others ramp up. So I'm going to take that as our kind of benchmark for the four efficiency cores, giving us 569. All we need to do then is multiply out the, the 1703 by 8 Firestorm cores and then add on our efficiency cores. And the score that it gives us is quite impressive. So assuming that they don't overclock the cores from where they are right now, they stay at 3.2 gigahertz, they don't add any voltage, they probably could do this because they've got the thermal envelope when they're gonna stick a big old cooler on the thing. But assuming they don't ramp up the cores any higher, we're gonna get 14193 is the multi-core score that I'm getting out of that. Just for context, that is equivalent to a 16 core, 3.2 gigahertz Xeon Mac Pro. Wow. So that is the kind of numbers that we're looking at in the uh, in the M1X. I think I've not looked at the graphics side of things because I don't understand how that stuff works particularly well. But I'm sure we will come to that down the line, and someone will uh, someone will do the maths on that. So I just wanted to put those numbers out there and uh, let you know where I think it's going to be sitting. Next up, Notification Squad. Uh, new members today. We have Raphael Bude. We have Richard Gallagher, we have Stuart C, 10S86, Daniel Doran, and Pietro Imodino. Uh, so thank you all for joining the notification squad. You guys will be entered into our draw for the ESR goodies. This is not even half of it. And that draw will take place on Saturday, uh, on Friday. In fact, maybe we'll do a live stream. Let's do a live stream on Saturday. Um, on Friday, that will be the closing day. So you need to be in by midnight GMT on Friday. Um, have uh, rung the bell, subscribe to the channel, and uh, and made sure that you comment in the comments to let me know that you've done it, and I will cut it off at midnight GMT on Friday. Then we'll do a live stream at some point on Saturday, I'll get that scheduled in, and we'll do the draw there. That sounds pretty fair. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you in the next one.